my presentation is going to be how to grow your Amazon business from $1 million to $10 million. I started this business back in 1998, back eBay, PayPal, you know, Amazon wasn't even there. The numbers we saw back then were nothing even close to what we've seen in the last couple of years. Uh, in 2008, market crashed, economy crashed. I decided I'd probably be good to get out of this business because profits were failing and, and I was about literally to go bankrupt. I got out of the business for three years, got back into it in 2011 and said, let's see if we can do this again. In 2015, we won the Inc. 500 fastest growing private company, number 140 out of 500. We won the 100 fastest growing private companies in LA County, we're number 21 out of 100. And we're on the Amazon Prosper Award, top 10 Amazon Prosper accounts. Those are three awards that honestly, I could not have won without two things. One, Amazon FBA, and two, the right repricer. I do use Feedvisor, obviously that's why I'm here, but I don't use, I'm not here just because of that. I strongly believe in their software, and without their software, I would not be where I am today. Here are our sales. If I take a look, oh, I guess, it, so here's where we started in 2011. Here's where we started on Feedvisor. This is where we are last year, 10.9 million. And this year, we're projecting about 22.5 million. Our sales so far, it's only 12 days into the year, are 420% of last year. So we're definitely on our way of doing the 22.5 million. There we go. I spoke at the September conference for Feedvisor, and I said that my best year ever was $100,000, and my goal was to do a $200,000 day. If you look here in October, we did $3.2 million at a 29% profit, $966,000. This is an actual uh, screenshot from our Feedvisor account. We did 200,000 here, 200,000 here, and we did 19 days over $100,000. Average day in October was roughly about $100,000. Now th this true entrepreneur never hits their goals as they keep moving them. The reason is, is because every one of you guys have said in your time, if I could do $500 a day, I'd be happy. Then it's, if I could do $1,000 a day, I'd be happy. $5,000 a day. At some point, you, that number just keeps moving. So when I said I'll do $100,000 a day, I honestly thought, holy crap, $100,000, I'm done. If I could do that, I don't have to work anymore. But no, what, I, what do I do? Now I want $200,000 a day. My goal now, honestly, is I want to hit a $500,000 day. And I truly believe this year I can do it. If I could hit two $200,000 days. And the reason is, is we're all our own worst enemy, OK? We all put limits on ourselves. You say, I can't do it. There's no possible way I could do $100,000 in one day. There's no possible way I could do $50,000 in one day until you've done it. And then you say, why didn't I try that earlier? You are your own worst enemy. Here's my recipe for success. First thing is, is you have to move to FBA. If you're not selling FBA, you're not going to get the sales that you're going to get through FBA. Have the right repricer. Everybody out there has a repricer. You don't want a repricer that drives profits into the ground. You want a repricer that raises profits. Be a courageous purchaser. Don't be afraid to buy and try new things. Some things are going to fail, some things are going to succeed. The ones that succeed, you move forward with. The ones that fail, you put to the side. But don't be afraid to make mistakes. Solid replenishment process. Don't be out of stock. One of the reasons why I did 10.9 million instead of, let's say, 13, 14, or 15 million last year is a lot of my hot selling products ran out of stock. I couldn't capture those sales because I didn't have the product. And you can't go to the manufacturer on December 10th and say, hey, I need XYZ product for Christmas. Never going to happen. Move on. Don't get attached. We all have dogs. We all have items that just don't sell. Maybe they were hot last year, and now they're not. Get rid of them. Don't worry about the loss. Take the loss and move on. Think big. 
always be expanding. Just because you have a certain amount of products, I sell toys, I sell costumes, but I'll show you in one of my slides. If you run across a product that sells, it doesn't matter what you sell on Amazon. You can sell kitchen, you can sell toys, you could sell costumes, you could sell, it's whatever you can find that can make a profit. Have the money available. The worst thing is cash flow. If you don't have cash flow, you're never gonna succeed. And keep a lean operation. This is one item that we sold last year. You can see that, and this is showing the repricer here. On this particular day, Saturday, October 17th, two weeks before Halloween, our average price was $31.38. The average buy box price was $26.99 to $31.35, and we had 80% of the buy box that day. Now, how is it that I had 80% when I was three cents higher than the average price? I had the right repricer. It's not about high, low, what, you need somebody that thinks and understands what Amazon is looking for, what Amazon wants to put in the buy box. You can see here, see this period right here? Can, everyone can guess what happened there. I ran out of stock because I wasn't thinking enough and by the time I had my inventory in, we sold out this day and we were out three days and boom, we finally got it in on this day. And then over here and over here, by October 25th, we were sold out. We missed this opportunity and this opportunity. Here's another product. We thought, we had bought 2,400 units. And I thought to myself, 2,400 units was plenty. In fact, I'm gonna have some left over, okay? We were making 24% margin, 2,400 units sold. This was from uh, November 1st to the 15th, so a 45-day period. I would be ecstatic, but guess what? Look what happened. Here's Thanksgiving, here's my sales. Boom, December 11th, what happened? Out of stock. How much money did I miss in two weeks before Christmas? Why? Wasn't thinking big enough. I said to myself, 2,400 units was fine. I probably could have sold 5,000 of these because we all know that this period here is where you're gonna get the most sales and that's where you're gonna get the most profits. You get these peaks and then you run out and then you're dead. Keep product in stock. Even if you think you're gonna sell 5,000, buy six because people are still gonna buy in January. People get gift cards. People. You, I didn't get what I wanted for Christmas. Grandma gave me a gift card. Hey, let's go buy it on Amazon. Now this is talking about move on, don't get attached. We all know 2014 was the year of Frozen. I sold more Frozen products than I, it was insane. The Elsa costumes, the pillow pets, all that. I had leftover pillow pet products. The product literally died come January 1st of 15. Nobody wanted Frozen anymore. So I recall the product back and I sent it back in to avoid the long-term storage fees because this happens to be an oversized item. Now, what do you guys see here? What's the first thing you guys see here? He just lost $2,000. I didn't lose $2,000. I got $12,000 in money I could use for another product that will sell. Don't fall in love with your products. If it's losing money, if it's not gonna make a profit, get rid of it. Do you want to pay the Amazon storage fees? Do you want to sit on $12,000 worth of product? I sold 533 of these at that Christmas time from November and December, and I still had 68 left. So obviously, in, I, I have none now. Get rid of it. It doesn't matter. It's, it's dead money. The other thing you have worried, don't worry about Profits. Some of you are afraid about profits. Here's an item we sold 275, 70% margin. This was during the Halloween time. This thing should retail for $34.99. We were selling this on an average, what was it? $98.20 is what we were selling this average at. Okay? And guess what? We sold 275. I had three in stock, and those were because Amazon said they were damaged or whatever. I only got two of these back for 
pricing issues. Two people said, what the hell was I thinking? Return it to Amazon. So, but who cares? Okay, if I sold 275 at $90, they could burn those two costumes as far as I care. And this is part of why don't, you know, during Christmas and Halloween and those holidays, uh, Valentine's Day, Easter, Grams love to buy Chotsky's for the basket for Easter. During holiday times, you will see prices skyrocket on certain items. Don't be afraid to take advantage of it. Don't worry about the people that are going to return. Don't sweat the little stuff. If somebody returns something, so what? You made more than enough money on the other 275 to make up for anything that somebody complains about. I know how many times you guys get something where all of a sudden you sell it, goes to the customer, next thing you know, you get an email saying refund $98, and you're mad because you're like, wait a minute, no, no, they bought it, they own it, they can't return it. It doesn't matter because you made enough money. But the only way you're going to do this is you have to be able to get a hold of that market at the right time. If this thing's selling for $39.99, probably all through September, probably for the first few days of October, are you going to be able to watch every single product to see whether it's up, down, or sideways? No. I did it. Before I got on a repricer, I literally for two to three hours a day had a spreadsheet, had an Excel sheet, would sit there, I would analyze this, analyze this, analyze this, and what I did was I figured out every time I just spent three hours analyzing a product, it all changed. So it didn't matter what I just did three hours ago because all that data was irrelevant because somebody right behind me said, oh, I'm just going to reprice it a penny less than him. So then it became worthless. If you have the right software, you can set it for lows and highs, and at Halloween time and Christmas time, my highs are high. I probably had this thing, I, I think my high was $129.99, okay? Did I sell any at that price? I don't know, maybe, but I know that we sold an average of $98.20 for an item that sells for $34.50, and the reason is because the American buying public waits to the last minute to buy everything, and when mom promised little Johnny that halo costume and said, don't worry, I'm going to get it, I'm going to get it, I'm going to get it, and then three days before Halloween, Johnny says, where's my costume? And mom says, oh my God. And she jumps on Amazon. She maybe even went to the local store, they're sold out, jumps on Amazon. She doesn't care that it's $100. You know what she cares about? Getting little Johnny his costume. And they'll pay it. But if you're stuck at $39.99, that's all. You will only make as much as you allow yourself to make. Don't be afraid. This is a little bit about when I say sell anything. We're toys and costumes. That's what I've sold for years and years and years. Over here, I'm selling a pro-style leather sleeve for IMAX. This is a pro-style leather sleeve, 15 inch for IMAX, and here's some ear pollution phantom headphones. I'm getting 100% of the buy box here, 59% of the buy box. I'm not in the electronics business. I'm not in the iPhone or the, the iMac case business, but I happen to find a really good deal on these products from, a, you know, from the manufacturer. I don't buy, and I, I will, if I step back, I've done the retail arbitrage. Back in 2011, I would run. I remember running to Targets and buying up their Furbies. I remember buying the little Mattel Gidget, I forget what it was, some electronic toy, going buying Lego or whatever and selling it on Amazon. First of all, there's not enough hours in a day to do that. The money you're going to make really is minimal. It's so minimal that when you really realize what, how much you're getting paid per hour to do that, you would never do it again. The second thing, as, as was discussed earlier, I got nailed. Somebody said, wait a minute, it's not authentic. And Amazon says to me, prove it's authentic. We want a receipt. So what did I do? I scanned a receipt, emailed the target receipted to Amazon, and guess what happened? They, they not suspended me, but they knocked that ASIN and said I could never sell that ASIN again. End of story. They blocked that particular one. I was just lucky and thankful, because after talking to people, that they didn't suspend me for that. It's not worth the time and money to, to do. Everyone starts somewhere and that's great, but that's not somewhere where I, I personally, hindsight being 2020, I would not do that. My point here though is, is don't be afraid to sell other products. If you're in the household category, sell some toys. If you're in the toy category, you know, you can sell beauty or whatever. But make sure whatever category you do sell in, number one, some of them need approvals. I know toys needs approval during the Christmas season. I think health and beauty need approvals during most of the, season, the year. Make sure you're approved, 
but if you can get a proof of the category, sell whatever makes money. Have the money available. I actually have every one of these accounts open today. I have a $150,000 line with Cabbage. Is it expensive? It's expensive as hell. Lending Club, On Deck, and Amazon Lending. Out of these, Amazon Lending is the cheapest if you get an offer. You cannot ask for the money. They will send you the money you know, once you get established and all that. But if you do accept Amazon Lending, or On Deck or Lending Club, just have money available. I don't care if you have an uncle who's rich who will give you $100,000 at the drop of the dime. And the reason why I say this is, as you grow in your business and whatever you do, we wear toys and costumes. Mattel, every year, twice a year, has a big closeout. So right now, the first part of January, anything that didn't sell for Christmas, they're giving away. Okay, But you don't get terms. You don't get to pick and choose. It's kind of like, here, here's our list. We want it gone, and we're sending it to a handful of people because we want somebody to take it all. Okay? But we're going to give it to you for 30 to 40 cents on the dollar. But here's the problem. They're not going to sell to you because it's five dollars or $10,000. They want you to dump $100,000, $200,000. They want it gone. So somebody out there has that kind of money, and somebody out there will take that deal. If you don't have money available, you're never going to be able to make those deals. If you sign up with Cabbage, don't use it until you need it. But here's the thing. If you take Cabbage, for example, and they're charging you, let's say, 10%, if you buy something that you can make 30% on, is it costing you 10% or is it making you 20%? So, I mean, you have to look at what you put out versus what it brings back. These deals come around all the time. Generally, you don't know about them because you're not finding the right people, talking to the right people, or haven't proven yourself as a large enough account. All of you, if you're buying from manufacturers, they all have their deals. Every one of them is selling something at a discount unloading something, doing something, they're not telling you about it because you're not a big enough account yet and they don't want to, you know, they're not going to sit there and, you know, Mattel's not going to go to, you know, 10,000 accounts and say, hey guys, we got all this stuff available because then the whole world knows that the stuff's on clearance. So they go to their top five or ten accounts, say, this is what's available, and then when you go on Amazon and you say, wait a minute, I pay $15 for that item, I'm selling at $29.99, but this guy's selling it at $15.99, how the hell is he doing that? He can't do it, he's losing money. He's not losing money. He just found the deal that you can't find. And that's the big thing is don't ever say he can't or how is that happening? Because whenever you say, how is that happening? This can't happen, he can't do this. What you're saying is, I don't know what he knows. I'm not getting the deal he's getting. They are out there, you're just not finding them. Generally with the manufacturers, you're not gonna find them until you start to become a large account. The larger you, so it's not something, this isn't something you're going to find overnight, but keep your eyes and ears open. If you have a rep, ask your rep, say, hey, do you guys ever have closeout deals? Do you guys, and a lot of times they're going to say, yeah, we have them all the time. Well, how come you don't tell me about it? I didn't know you were interested. If you don't ask, they're not going to tell you about it. Just real quick back to the money. You don't have to use this all the time. Have it available. I guarantee you there was a point in your life where you were ready, willing, and able to buy something if you had the money. And, and you couldn't find the money, and by the time you did or would have the money, somebody else is already buying it. That's the end of my presentation. <laughs>